Praise the Lord. Emancipation. Somebody shout emancipation. Total. Complete. Perfect. Today. In my life. It will happen in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you for the beginning of this great outpouring of your power. Tonight, O oh Lord, for everyone here, there, everywhere, everyone, total emancipation for everyone in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word, fulfill your promise, Manifest your power in every life tonight. Confirm miracle in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Tonight, as we come to this beginning, supernatural things are going to take place in your life. In Jesus' name. Tonight I'm talking to you on all round emancipation. All round in your life, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, in the work of your heart, in your family, every yoke will be broken. Powers of darkness will be destroyed. There'll be all round emancipation, freedom, deliverance, salvation, healing through the look of faith. I'm taking the story from the Bible, and the story is in Numbers chapter 21. Let me read the story to you, then I'll make the interpretation, application to you, and the victory they got you'll get that victory tonight. Numbers 21, reading from verse 4. And they journeyed from the Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea and to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. What happened is God delivered the children of Israel, like he, he will deliver you tonight. And then he was taking them on a journey. And their journey would lead them to the land of promise. We are on a journey in our lives. Everyone is on a journey. From the baby, to the toddler, and to the infant, and to the youth, and to the teenager, and to young adults, and until old age, we're moving on. And every year, it's like a milestone in our journey. And sometimes, you know, we get discouraged because of the things happening to us on the way in our journey. If you're discouraged tonight, if you have ever been discouraged, you are not alone. Others have been discouraged but in, a, in their discouragement, you know, when we're discouraged, we could look at the sun in the sky. Or we could look at the dungeon in darkness. They chose to do something wrong and to say something wrong. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and the people speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us up? out of Egypt to die in the wilderness. There are some people, they are nearer death than life in their language, in their thinking, in their way of life, in their interaction with people. Any little thing that happens, they are nearer death in the tongue, 
in the words of their mouth than they are to life. And these children of Israel, they were nearer death. They never remembered at that time of discouragement that God was taking them to the land of promise. How about you today? Do you think and talk and feel any little sickness, any little problem, any little challenge, death, death, death? The Lord will make you to see life today. And then they said, for there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathed this light bread. They were saying, economy was down for them. They talked of retrenchment. They said, we have lost even the ability to have good food that we want. They said they were living from hand to mouth. And this bread they got was not very good for them. How about us? What do we say? How do we think? How do we talk about economy? How do we talk about our problems? How do we talk about our joblessness? And now they speak against God. They sing against God and against Moses. But there is consequence for everything we say or do. Look at verse 6. It says, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. It was then they woke up. Tonight, you will wake up. All the things they brought upon themselves, of the things they said, what brought them into the death they were talking about. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. That made a turning point in their lives. And tonight, I'm going to give you the chance to have a turning point. I didn't hear you there. Yeah. Tonight, a turning point in your life, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, they saw other people dying. They saw the consequence of what they were saying. All of a sudden, they said, we must do something. Our situation can change. Your situation tonight will change. Yeah. So, they said, we have seen. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And God answered the prayer of Moses. The Lord will answer my prayer for you tonight in Jesus' name. Whatever pain, whatever sorrow, whatever sickness, whatever suffering you have, as you have come and you desire that we pray for you, tonight God will answer your prayer, my prayer concerning you in Jesus' name. But you know, the people opened up to the prayer. When you open up to the prayer, everything we say in the prayer, miracle will come upon your life. The miracle is already coming from heaven. It will land at your doorstep. It will land on your body. It will land in your soul. And then in verse 8, look at verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make a furry serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass tonight. It shall come to pass in your life. It shall come to pass for every one of us today. It shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Shall live. From tonight, you don't have any reason to die prematurely. Because all you need to do is to look. And to have the look of faith from tonight. You don't have any excuse to remain in your problem. 
all you need to do tonight is look emancipation will come for you healing will come for you salvation will get to you there in jesus name look at verse 9 then in verse 9 and moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole now i need to explain something to you why did he do that god was going to give them a picture it was a symbol of jesus the savior jesus the healer jesus the deliverer coming that everybody will see why was it put upon a pole you see they were in their millions from what we know about them they were about three million people and the serpents and the sickness and the infirmity and the affliction was thrown in everywhere if they had put the brass serpent of brass on the ground many will not see if they put it at the height at the level of the height of man the people will not see that's why they raised up a pole higher than any man and every man so that as it is of everybody from everywhere will look and they'll be able to see christ jesus has been lifted up above any man every man that ever lived on the face of the earth is higher is greater and because christ is lifted up like that serpent on the pole tonight you can look you will see jesus and once your faith will catch the attention of christ and the sacrifice he made for you immediately your miracle of salvation will come your miracle of healing will come and deliverance will come for you for everyone tonight in jesus name christ is lifted up so high that everyone in our nation here everyone in every nation everywhere everyone in the whole universe because is higher and above every man in every nation and the sacrifice is accepted by the heavenly father all over the world tonight all those who are hearing and you look at jesus by faith salvation will come to you no matter where you are in the world is coming to you today where are you you will get that salvation, that healing, that miracle tonight in Jesus' name. And so it says, and Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it upon a pole, and it came to pass, like God said, it shall come to pass. Actually, it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, any man, any man, of whatever background any man of whatever culture any man of whatever religion any man of whatever status any man you are that man today you are that woman today if you don't exclude yourself God will not exclude you. He wants everyone to come in. He wants everyone to have the miracle that Christ has provided on the cross of Calvary. You will come in. I said you will come in. Young man, young woman, boy, girl, Christ died for you and Christ provided salvation, healing, deliverance miracle for you don't exclude yourself don't say i am not don't say i am you know this or that tonight the power of christ the authority of christ will deliver you am i talking to somebody there today praise the lord praise the lord it will come it says when he beheld when he looked 
on the serpent of brass, he lived. You will live. Look at John chapter 3. And we're reading there from verse 14. John 3, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, even so, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. The Son of Man lifted up. The Son of Man lifted up. That's talking about a sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Verse 15, that so that whosoever, whosoever, that's you, whosoever, I said that's you, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. You will not perish. I will not perish. All it takes is to look at Jesus tonight, believe on the Lord Jesus tonight, so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. Then in verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believeth, believes in him should not perish. Should not perish. Should not perish. The Lord looked at you and he said, this one should not perish. Are you there? I said, are you there? Heaven says you should not perish. What do you say? I said, what do you say? God said you should not perish. The angels look at you and said, you should not perish. I look at you and I said, God loves you, you should not perish. And we all come here together and we look at you and we say, you should not perish. You should say the same thing about yourself. Christ has provided salvation for me, has provided healing for me, has provided deliverance for me, has provided miracle for me, and heaven and earth, Christ and the heavenly Father says, I should not perish, I will not perish, but have everlasting life, but have everlasting life. You have everlasting life in Jesus' name. Tonight, it will happen. Tonight, it will come to pass. Tonight, the Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at one, two, three, three points I'm bringing to you today. Number one, the cause and the comprehension of man's suffering. Why do we suffer? Do we understand why we suffer? Do we understand? Do we comprehend the reason why we suffer? The cause, the comprehension of man's suffering. Number two, the conviction and the confession of man's sin. The conviction. They were convicted in their heart. And then they came and they made a confession. The conviction and the confession of man's of mad sin. Then number three is the conversion and the cure by the merciful Savior. The conversion, that power of transformation, conversion will come to your light tonight in Jesus' name. Number two there is the cure. Whatever, whatever the infirmity and the affliction and the sickness you have, and no matter how long it had been there tonight, a kill, a healing, a miracle, a deliverance is coming your way in Jesus' name. Amen. It will happen to you. I'm looking at number one here. Number one is the cause and the comprehension of man's suffering. Already I read the story to you. The story of how they were on their journey. 
and God had a good intention for them in bringing them to that journey. And then, because of discouragement, because of hardship, because of difficulty, because of the unexpected. You know, in life, many things happen that we didn't expect before. As young people, I didn't expect that. As a single lady, you didn't expect what happened. As a married woman, you didn't expect what happened. And because of the unexpected things that came to them, that's why they said what they said, they did what they did, and they think the result of that, the consequence of that, was that they suffered. Look at Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your iniquities, it's our sin that causes the problem. It's our speech, the bad language of our mouth that causes the problem. It's our action, the action against God, against man. It's the sin that causes affliction and sickness and the problem and the suffering on earth. It says, your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, For your hands are defiled with blood. Your hands are defiled with blood. I'm sure you understand that. I don't need to explain that to you. Your hands defiled those who steal, their hands are defiled. Those who smoke, they take it with their hands, put it in their mouth, your hands defiled. And those who fight, and they use their hands to hurt other people, your hands are defiled. And those who take the lives of other people, your hands are defiled. And the various things that we do, that cause the suffering of man. And then it says, your leaves have spoken lies. Is, is there anyone there that can say, since you were born into this world, you never, never, never told a lie. Anyone here in the nation, anyone in any nation, I'm sure you remember, lies, pretense, deception. Your lips have spoken in lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. That's why we suffer. Our hands are involved. Our feet, where we walk to, involved. Our lips, our tongue, what we say. Our eyes, what we look at. Our spirit, our mind, our heart, what we think about, what we plan, they brought trouble upon us. But God will deliver us tonight. You in particular, the Lord will deliver you. I rejoice with you tonight. All those things that came upon us because of our waywardness, because of our evil, because of our defilement, and because of our deception. The Lord, he does not love what we've done, but he loves us. The Lord loves you tonight. I said the Lord loves you tonight. He does not love, he does not like, he does not approve of what we have done, but he still says, I know what you've done, but I love you, and you will not perish. Amen. He loves me. Say, he, he loves me, and you will not perish. Amen. 
Look at Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. In Jeremiah 25, verse 25, your iniquities have turned away these good things, and your sins are withholding good things from you. All those good things are want, you know, in our self deception. We think if I do bad, then I will get good. How can you? That's the deception of the human heart. But the Bible says, be not deceived whatsoever a man, a woman, a boy, a girl souls. That's what they worry. But some people think if I join the gang, something good will happen to me. No, it doesn't happen that way. If I sow bad seed, wild oath, then something miraculous will come. It doesn't happen that way. If I hurt them, if I do evil to them, they'll be so much afraid of me that they will do good unto me compulsorily. It doesn't happen that way. Our sins, our evil, our transgression, they withhold good things away from us. Let's come to number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the conviction and the confession of my sins. The conviction. Look at Numbers chapter uh, chapter twenty one. We're looking at verse seven. Therefore, the people came to Moses. They used their legs and they came. They didn't say, "All right, we don't want to save our faces. If we confess that we did that." Then Moses will feel great and say, okay, I'll pray for you. They didn't say that. They were not quiet. There were some people, they know they have done evil. They know they have done wrong. They have the conviction, but they'll keep quiet. Nobody will hear it from me. And nobody will know that, you know, I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling condemned. I'm feeling convicted that I did anything evil. That's not wise. Come Tell the Lord, after all, he knows everything we have done. He knows everything we have said. He knows everywhere we have gone. He knows what we are drinking. He knows what we are smoking. He knows the gang we have joined. He knows the evil, the secret things in our life. Come. And after all, when you come, the Lord is not going to condemn you. The Lord will save you. The Lord will forgive you. The Lord will turn your life around for the better in Jesus' name. Number one, they were convicted. And now that conviction led them to confession. Hold on, hold on. That word confession. There are people, they are not convicted of anything. But confession is their normal habit. Because anytime they go to the house of worship, anywhere, anytime, whatever religion, they are used to confession. Almighty, I confess what I should have done, I have not done. Okay, ask them, what is it in particular? Well, that's what they tell us to say when we go to house of worship. And what we should not have done, we have done. What is it? I don't know. That's what they tell us. Before confession can be real. And before confession can be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. There must be conviction. I feel sorry, conviction. I feel I'm dirty. That thing I did made me dirty. That's conviction. That thing I did and the society I joined made me to be like a man, a woman of darkness. That I'm avoiding the light. I have joined a society of darkness. That thing I've done, I've joined the cult. I hope daddy will not know this. Mommy will not know this. I've gone to give all this sacrifice and now I'm feeling guilty. It is that guilt. It is that condemnation. It is that unhappy feeling in you. That's what we call conviction. And if that conviction is not there, just raising up the hand does not solve the problem. 
Just confessing with your mouth does not bring solution. There must be conviction and then confession. Therefore, the people came to Moses and they said, We have sinned. They didn't say, So and so made me do it. They didn't say, It's my environment that made me do it. They didn't go into, you know, that erroneous psychology that says man is good morally and normally, but his environment, what he sees and what he, he learns of others doing, that's what corrupts him. No, they didn't say it's my environment. It's because I saw that he was not you know, doing well, therefore, I went that way. They didn't lay their sin on anybody. A person that has real conviction, he'll make the right confession. They said, we have sin. And when you come to the Lord and you say, I have sinned, it's not Pharisee's fault, it's not Sadducee's fault, it's not the priest's fault, it's not my wife's fault. It's not my mommy's fault. It is my fault. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Pray unto the Lord. You know some people, when you do something wrong and you feel guilty, they say time will solve the problem. I'll be quiet. I won't say anything. I'll just go about other activities. I will distract myself so that my mind will not think about nothing anymore, so that my spirit will not condemn me anymore. They say they will be quiet because they think that time will solve the problem. Time will not forgive you. Time will not set you free. Time will not give you grace. Time will not give you the power to live in newness of life. They came and they said, pray for us. And Moses prayed for them. As you come tonight and you say, I know I'm wrong. And because of that, I confess what I've done. The Lord will forgive you. If I'm talking about you, say a good amen, heaven can do. Look at Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 51. We're looking at verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgression. Look at David. I acknowledge my transgressions. David had done wrong. And he said, he didn't lay the blame on Beersheba. He didn't lay the blame on somebody else. Somebody outside the home. Somebody within the home. He didn't lay the blame on what I'm going through. You know, when somebody is depressed, he has to drink. When somebody is unhappy and sad, he has to smoke. And when somebody is going through tough times, he has to find a way of releasing the tension that he had. No, he didn't give any excuse and say, it's because of this, that's why I did that. Because of that, that's why I did the other. He said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, against thee, thee only, have I sin. Look at that. That's a man that had conviction. His heart condemned him. His mind convicted him. He knew that he couldn't carry that guilt on without solving that, that problem. You know, Conviction is like a big load behind you, at your back, tied to you. And if you are trying to run, if you are trying to climb, if you are trying to move forward, that heavy load at your back 
will keep you down. You might try to smile, it will be a fake smile. And you might try to cheer up, it will not be real. That's the reason why I'm calling you tonight, come lay this load down. Then your mind will be free, your heart will be free, your life will be free. Everything will turn around for the better in your life. I'm happy that you are here tonight because if you will take this simple step and have conviction and then have confession, your life will turn around for the better, for the brighter, for the higher in Jesus' name. It says, look at this, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Look at verse 5. Behold I. He wasn't saying uh, the country is sinful. Uh -uh, not the country, yourself. Drops of water make a mighty ocean. Individuals make a community. The communities make the country. You talk, they are corrupt. Who are the they? How about you? They are bad. Who are the they? How about you? And they are wicked. They. Who are they? How about you? Little drops of water make a mighty ocean. Single individuals make the whole country. And so the man did not refer to they are bad, they are sinful, they are wicked, they are corrupt, they are evil, they are that is said, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6, behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Verse 7 says, Purge me. Purge me. Have you noticed people when they pray, Purge us? Who are you talking about? Talk about yourself. Me. The sin that I'm convicted of. The sin I am guilty of. The sin that I myself practiced, promoted, perpetrated, and taught other people. That's what I have to bring before the Lord. Punch me with Aesop and I shall be clean. Tonight, you'll be clean. Yeah. Where are you? I said, where are you? Tonight, cleansing, salvation will come for you. Yeah. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. No other person can wash you. The man did not call for a prophet. Wash me. Call for a priest. Wash me. Call for a pastor. Wash me. Call for a religious leader. Wash me. He said, God, you're the only one. They cannot wash my heart. They cannot cleanse my heart. They cannot purge me. Only God. The God of creation. The God of redemption. The God of salvation. And the God of all power. Is the only one that can do it. And while you are there tonight online. While you are there tonight over the radio. On television. Tonight, tonight, tonight. It will purge you. It will cleanse you. It will save you. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, he tells us, he's still praying. And this is what he wanted the Almighty to do. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Now my sin brought sorrow and suffering and sadness. If you purge me tonight, if you pardon me tonight, if you forgive me tonight, if you save me tonight, there will be joy. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. And then in verse 9, it tells us, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out and wipe out and clean out and erase forever blot out all 
mine iniquities. He will do it. He will blot out your sin that not even an angel can see that sin anymore. He'll blot out your sin. Not even an enemy, not even Satan can see those sins anymore. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, he tells us, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. When somebody has salvation, forgiveness, freedom, cleansing, blotting out of all transgression, there is joy. And that joy will come to you tonight. Joy. Somebody shall joy. Joy in the day and joy in the night. Joy that when you leave this world and you meet the judge of the whole earth, you will say, come in, come in. You are not a condemned man, a condemned woman anymore. You are a converted man, a converted woman. And the joy of salvation will follow you to heaven, to the throne of God in Jesus' name. And then he says, uphold me. After you get saved, after you have that evidence of salvation, uphold me with thy free spirit. Come to number three here. Number three, I'm talking to you to now. Honor the conversion and the cure by the merciful Savior. The conversion and the cure tonight, the Lord will convert you. Amen. Amen. What's conversion? When you take some scraps of paper, sheets of paper, of cords from the printers, and the printer said, those of cords are useless. Those of cords and those scraps of paper, they are worthless. They mean nothing. They don't amount to anything. Throw it away. And then somebody says, okay, don't throw them away. And he gathers all those, uh, you know, cuts of paper, strands of paper, and uh, thrown away sheets of paper. And then he runs them through a particular machine, and they become usable and they become sellable and become worthy that's the conversion a useless life the lord will take that useless life tonight he'll make you useful yeah. a, a downtrodden life that amounts to nothing the lord will take that life tonight he'll brush you up he'll wash you up he'll blot all the transgressions out and then he will recreate you there will be conversion a new man will come out of that old man sitting there tonight in jesus name a new woman a renewed woman will come out of that person that is saying i've wasted my life i've wasted my time I amount to nothing. I can do nothing. Come to Christ tonight. That useless life will become a useful life. Progress in your life. Power in your life. Newness in your life. You will yet climb the mountain of joy, happiness, and success in your life in Jesus' name. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Not only that, he also cures us. Did you hear about those I spoke about in our story in Numbers chapter 21? They were beaten and therefore they were sick and they were having pain in their body. And as they looked up, to the serpent on the pole like we're looking up to christ at calvary healing will come to you amen. give me a good amen, amen so that the healing of god will be definite and certain in your life in jesus name amen. conversion one and then kill two salvation one healing two miracle of healing miracle of deliverance is coming upon your life it's happened to other people 
it will happen to you. Can I give you any testimony? And what God has done for other people, he will do in your life. Okay, let me see. Those who want to hear, but I don't want to tell you any story you don't want to hear. If you don't want to hear, I don't want to tell you. If you want to hear the testimonies of other people that will be repeated in your life, where are you? Amen. Amen. You know, we've been having this uh, GCK uh, Global uh, Crusade and the Lord has been doing uh, wonderful things. I cannot think of anything uh, that God has not done. It's opened the eyes of the blind. It's made the deaf and the dumb to speak. It's made the lame to rise up and to walk. It's made the people that have broken bones and those broken bones to be mended. It's, uh, it's taught the kidneys and the livers of many people and they have been totally healed. Let me just tell you to now today and I'll tell you more tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There was this woman in our capital city in Nigeria, Abuja City. And her name Esther. She had stroke. And this stroke had been on for a long time. And she couldn't do anything having that stroke and then we had the crusade and she obeyed the word of the man of God I said lay your hand there raise up the other hand and that's what she did and after the prayer in the name of Jesus the power of God came upon her she rose up tonight you rise up let her tell the story to you by herself. Esther, tell us the story. I thank God for giving me another chance. The case of Esther Ojimojo, my younger sister, is simply amazing, and I can say it's a matter of undeserved miracle. On 22nd of May, on a Sunday, she went to bed like every other person. And the next morning at about 1 a.m., she woke up and discovered she was paralyzed on the right hand and the right leg. It was a bitter experience. And uh, to the glory of God, on the second night of the just concluded global crusade, supernatural deliverance to Christ. I was in the office, I was on duty, I had much on my hands. But uh, somehow, my people could not go, so they connected from the house. And right, you know, when pastor was sharing testimonies and, you know, they were just, you know, watching on the screen. And all of a sudden, my little daughter asked my sister to, you know, pray. She's five years old. And uh, she started praying, raised her hand, and all of a sudden, she could use the hand. You know, she could walk with the leg. She went to open the kitchen door, close it with the same hand that, you know, the physiotherapy will say is zero. That's the language they were telling us. They will raise the hand and say it's zero. You know, and then for about a month plus before then, she couldn't do much things on her own. It couldn't be better. There must be somebody to assist her to bed. But that night, she went to take her bed for the very first time. And that is how I went to the bedroom. I bathe myself. I drink water with myself so i'm here to return all the glory in fact see i don't know what to say again but god god <laughs> jesus <laughs> Embarrassing. Holy Ghost embarrassed sir. I give glory to God for this undeserved mess. She's not a member of the church. At the time she was sick, I could not really say she was in the Lord. It was in the course of this crisis that by the grace of God, I mean God has been helping her to see how she can become spiritually transformed to the glory of God. So it's a miracle of mercy, sir. Oh, Amen. Amen. Miracle of mercy. Amen. 
it's your turn tonight. I'm looking for the person I'm talking about. I said, it's your turn tonight in Jesus' name. Now, you must hear this one. This one is, he was a herbalist. What did I say? Herbalist. And he thought he was doing something for other people. But when his own problem came, he could not help himself. And I'm sure you have heard this before, but I want you to hear it again. Say, I will hear it again. And eventually, this crusade happened, and then she connected. And the thing, the message, or the power, entered into his heart. And then, miracle happened, like it will happen to you tonight. And all the charms, all the juju, and everything, she burnt everything. Okay, let him tell the story himself, Mr. Anthony Ogbodo. Hear him now. I from Enugu State. I then my house the here the crusade where the palace they do. So in those three days, God come and arrest me inside your house, inside my house. So I'm a native man. I'm a herbalist. I they do juju. The crusade enter my body since. When I they help me, I can't like God. I they disturb the time when I never let fight. I they disturb. Then say, ah, don't cool. Twelve o'clock, one o'clock. I know they allow people to sleep. I they disturb. The same person when they serve devil, yeah, you know, he could do anything with. Yeah? But since when God enter my my heart, since God will arrest me, come they cool down. I go burn the thing. You put fire everything. Burn, burn everything. Now when I they do that medicine, my wife and my children, everybody run for my house. After I repent, after I know Jesus Christ, when I repent, all of them come back. So, all my family, everybody, they praise God. <laughs> and they beg you, Pastor Kumar, please make you no stop the this. This crusade, when they did, they help everybody. Now, because of this crusade, I can't repent. I pay my house, they hear the crusade. That's why I repent. I'm a native. I burn everything. Please, pass up. Make it everybody. They hear the crusade. They will make everybody repent. First, when you're there for Jesus, you don't know the truth. Really Thank you. Amen. It's appealing to us that we should not stop the crusade so that yourself your family our country our continent the whole world will know about jesus christ the savior the healer the deliverer the miracle worker you know what he tells us in the story that we're reading in numbers chapter 21 it says in verse 9, in verse 9, it says, And Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it upon a pole, and it came to pass. Tonight, in your life, it will come to pass. In your family, it will come to pass. In your children, it will come to pass. Tonight, miracle. Tonight, salvation. Tonight, healing. It will come to pass. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, any man, any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. That's representing Jesus. And tonight, as you look at Jesus and look upon Jesus, all your sins will be blotted away. All your sicknesses will be taken away. Remember, once you have the conviction, and then you come in all sincerity, and you say, Lord, I am the guilty one. I have said, I have done, I have gone, I've drunk, I've smoked, I've done things I shouldn't have done. 
I have the conviction. I feel guilty. And then you make the confession to the Lord. And then you behold him and believe him. Forgiveness will come. Are you ready for that forgiveness? I said, are you ready for that forgiveness? And when the Lord forgives you, he will set you free. The power to live in newness of life will come to you. After the Lord forgave those people and healed those people, he didn't continue again speaking against God and speaking against Moses. The things they had done before, forgiven, they were set free. That is salvation. It will happen to you tonight in Jesus' name. Where are you there? I said, where are you there? Praise the Lord is coming to you. It's bowed and eyes closed. You know that forgiveness is available in Christ tonight. Salvation is available in Christ tonight. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. You say, I want that forgiveness. I want him to blot out all my guilt, all my condemnation. I feel guilty. I remember the things I've done. And I want to be free. I want to be forgiven. Just raise up that hand. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and forgiven and cleansed and the sins will be blotted out. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, and you are going and you are confessing those things and you are turning away from them and you are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your own savior tonight wherever you are just raise up the hand and stand up stand up where you are God bless you there God bless you there God bless you there forgiveness is coming right now anywhere you are to the right to the left to the back to the center in the front anywhere you are you say Lord I feel guilt I know I'm a sinner I cannot pretend I cannot deceive myself I am a sinner and I want forgiveness and salvation from the Lord tonight just raise up that hand and stand up wherever you are. Anywhere you are, you are listening to us on the radio, or you are on television, or you are online, anywhere you are in any country, and you are hearing this message, and you say, this is my night of salvation. The, joy, the Lord will give you the joy of salvation, the peace that comes with forgiveness, and the reality of your name reaching in the book of life in heaven. As you are standing up there, tell the Lord, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I've done what I shouldn't have done. I believe you are God of mercy. And I come for your mercy, for your forgiveness, for your salvation now. I believe that Jesus died for me and he rose again for my salvation, my justification. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe it doesn't take your time. The God of mercy, I've received your mercy of salvation now. I'll pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all these who have been convicted of their sins, who have confessed their sins, who have asked you for the blotting out of the sins and the cleansing and the salvation and the freedom. I pray, grant them that salvation now in Jesus' name. Blot out all their sins. Take the remembrance of their sins away from your sight in Jesus' name. Grant them pardon and peace in their hearts right now. And Lord, give them the power to have a new life, a changed life, that they'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They'll give you the slips to fill. It's to keep record that you have given your life to Christ and he has given you a salvation. I'm still going to pray for your healing, but before then, let's finish this. We'll call on our pastor here uh, to lead us during this time of uh, counseling. God bless you.
You are a very important person. You have taken the best decision of your life. You have turned over your life to the Lord. It's a new beginning, a glorious beginning tonight. Give the details about yourself. You have taken the right step. The step that leads to joy eternal. Submit all the necessary information that our counselors will require from you. It is going to help you. It's going to help us to be able to keep record and help you more. It's a journey forward. The decision that you have made is a decision that will take you to the next level, higher level of your life. You are important personality. There is joy in heaven now because of this decision that you have made tonight. The angels are rejoicing. And you can imagine what that means. The host of heaven are rejoicing because of the decision that you have made. You will make good that decision by giving all the information that is expected of you. Your name, the name that you are known and called with at home. Your telephone number, your mobile number, 11 digits. Give it accurately to our counselors. And the blessing of the Lord is already upon you. You are a blessed man, a blessed woman. A blessed boy, a blessed girl. If you are online, you are online on radio or television, there is something scrolling on your screen right now. Connect with Christ. As you connect, click on that link that is on your screen. And you'll be connected to a place where you'll be able to give us your name, your location, and everything about you. We want to help you. We want to be part of your great story. Connecting with Christ makes you a new creature. You have a new story, new life. I envy you. Because your life will be beautiful from this moment. Welcome, welcome to this kingdom life. You're on, you're on radio, you're on television, you are joining us via Zoom, via YouTube, via Twitter, or any of the social media. You are very important. Giving your life to Christ makes you a very important person welcome to the kingdom together you will change our world for our world for christ cancel us confirm now confirm now if you are done because miracles are coming soon if you believe say amen, amen. you know what you can start praying now and whatever the problem is, no matter the distance, Australia, Israel, Japan, Russia, everywhere in the world, miracles are coming your way. Very soon. Get ready for it. Counselors, you can give me a signal now on the, on the, on the, on the left, on the right. Yes, in the middle, 
Let us know what is going on. Are we done? We are set now. Get ready. Your miracle is coming your way. This There's a phone number that is on the screen. Plus 234-915-444-9263. I'll take that number again. Plus 234 234-915-444-9263. You can call on WhatsApp. From anywhere you are in the world, you will connect with Christ. Counselors, take your time with them. Make sure you get the full details. We are not rushing this. It's very important to us. Get the full name. Remember, you can't put a nickname. Put your real name. You, the name people know you. The name they call you. Put your real phone number. Your contact address. Because Christ will be visiting you regularly. And the people of God will also contact you. It's a new family. It's not a church. It's a family of Jesus. GCK is a worldwide brand. It is touching your life. And it is connecting you with Christ. That's why we say it is gospel to every creature. So take your time. Cancel us please. Ensure you get the full details. If you are done, signal to me. Signal to me. On the left. Yes. On the right. Wave your hand if you are done. At the middle. I only see at the middle. Okay. It's all we're set. And now, it's your time. Here comes the man of God. Authority of Christ is coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Conversion and kill. Conversion has taken place now. The next thing is your kill. Your healing, Amen. your deliverance, Amen. your miracle. Amen. Stand up wherever you are. If you cannot stand up now, after the final amen, the power of God will touch you. You rise up in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, it's done every kind of miracle for everyone, and yours will not be an exception. Whatever problem you have, swelling in the tummy, in the neck, elephantiasis, cancer, ulcer, blindness, paralysis, whatever, the Lord will touch you right now. Yeah. Everywhere on this field, everywhere over the radio, television, and those online, the power of God is going to be released on you now. Yeah. If you're in the hospital and you are connected, the Lord will touch you now. Yeah. Raise up one hand and lift the other hand where you have the challenge. After the final amen, you'll see the miracle there. Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know you cannot fail. You say the name given to Christ 
in the name above every name. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in Jesus' name. Amen. I will pray that every incurable disease and every oppression, every attack, every affliction will bow at the mention of the name of Jesus tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, begin your work on everyone. Miracle for everyone. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Confirm it in Jesus' name. That madness, that insanity, brain problem, be healed in Jesus' name. Goiter, ernia, fibroid, Elephantiasis, any swelling in the body. Lord, I pray miraculously. Touch them now. Deliver them. Heal them in Jesus' name. Internal disease, HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, cancer, ulcer, kidney problem liver problem bleeding touch everyone right now Amen. miracle of healing Amen. miracle of deliverance Amen. for everyone in Jesus name Amen. incurable long standing sickness Lord what man this is impossible but what you all things are possible. Reach out to them right now. Amen. Touch them right now. Amen. Raise them up right now. Amen. Lord, that incurable disease be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are deaf and dumb, even if they were born that way, or they came to that later in life, I pray, the Lord will open your deaf ears. Amen. Loose your dumb tongues. Amen. Miraculously begin to hear. Amen. Miraculously begin to speak. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Not those who are blind. Whatever the reason for that blindness. I pray, Lord. You touch their blind eyes. Amen. Blind eyes, I command you, be opened and begin to see in Jesus' name. Amen. Clear their eyesight. Amen. Make them see clearly. Amen. Lord, I pray that those who are lying down helplessly, or they're on crutches, or they're on wheelchair, Lord, I pray that your mighty power will recreate them right now and the power, the strength, the ability to stand up and walk effect it in their lives right now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Everyone now, everywhere, whatever the name of the sickness, whatever the name of the problem, receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Lord, manifest it now. It shall come to pass. Let it come to pass. To the right, to the left, at the back, in front, in the middle. Lord, let it come to pass. Over the radio, television, online, everywhere, every nation, every congregation, miracle, manifestation, performance, let it come to pass. As we open our eyes, we'll open our eyes to miracles galore. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. 
it is done. Check up yourself. The miracle is already there.